think, I began thinking about this very, very early on when I was sort of rooting around for what to write my next book about. Um, and you, as you'll see when you read the book, it begins and ends with the story of Sandra Bland. But even before I thought that Sandra Bland's story would serve as the centerpiece of my book, I had been exploring a number of different themes. And this is, I want to tell you the story of how I came to um, be fascinated by this, by one particular question, this paradox. Um, you know, when you, when I am trying to figure out what my next book is going to be about, I, I read a lot, obviously, and I've come to believe that um, memoirs, autobiographies, are an extraordinarily rich source of material, but not all autobiographies. There's, think of this as two uh, axes. One axis is interestingness, where boring is on one end and fascinating is on the other. And the other axis is, um, un is, is the degree of constraint that the author feels about talking about his or her experiences. So at one end is constrained, and the other end is unconstrained. Now, you don't want to read the memoir of the person who is, leads a super, super interesting life, but is constrained. So if you're president of the United States, You've had an incredibly interesting life, but you can't actually share any of the interesting parts with the audience because you were president of the United States. Like, you have ongoing, it was classified, or you have ongoing relationships, you had to protect your position, blah, blah, blah. So that's in the interesting, constrained quadrant. You avoid those. Similarly, there are people who have led, who are totally unconstrained in what they could talk about, and you want to read their books, but you don't want to read their books if they have led boring lives. Very often, <laughs> people who have led boring lives are unconstrained precisely because they have led a boring life. <laughs> and so what you really want are books in the middle, books that are where the person is interesting enough that you want to listen to them, um, but who's, who are not so important that they are constrained. Right? You want the relatively obscure book. That's what you want. Um, so I began to read relatively obscure books, and it struck me that the epitome of the book in the exact center of this particular um, graph were memoirs by middling bureaucrats. And the best example of this were memoirs by middling former uh, officers of the CIA. Because it's, it occurred to me, I don't know if you realize this, but it seems like it's impossible for someone to retire from the CIA if they have held a middling position and not write a memoir. There's, there are just shelves of them. And I became quite attracted to this particular subgenre.